What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Bill and in today's video we are going to do a little bit of change to the back end of the Bronco. What we're going to do is change these lights. So instead of the OEM halogen lights we are switching over to the Oracle flush mount LED tail lights. Uh, here's a quick glance what they look like. And then we'll hold them up to compare. So a bit of a difference and like the biggest difference being that instead of sticking out like that, they are flush mount. This is the, the box they come in. Not a whole lot of extra padding. They do have these resistors, which you need in them if you're using the OEM lights. If you're doing signature lights and changing to this, you do need to unplug these. And then there is some stuff you need to do with Forescan in order to get the uh, these lights to work if, you have, if you're changing from the signature lights. If you're changing from the OEM incandescent bulbs like that we're using here, uh, then it's just a sweet straight, then it's just a straight swap, plug and play, nothing to it. So with that said, let's, uh, let's get to it. So first things first, there's three screws along here. All right, for this, you just need a regular Phillips head. Just back that center screw out. And sometimes it'll pull right out. If not, you can just pop it out with the panel tool. Just remember, don't push on this as you're trying to turn it otherwise it will just pop push it right back in that doesn't take much to get those pushed right back in now next thing we need to do is take this panel off the uh, fender flare is in the way they say you could just pull this back one out of the way I don't like doing that like everything where this is connected it's kind of flimsy and I don't want to just kind of try flexing that a little bit and working around it to me it's easier just to go ahead and take the whole thing off with personal preference and you should be able to just get your fingers back behind here I'm using a panel tool Should just pop right out. So it's two pins back there along the back side, and this front side just kind of has these little snaps right here that they snap into. So pull the back side first and then the front side should pull apart and I got some dirt in there we'll go ahead and clear out while we're in here All right, now that we got two 10 millimeters one here and then one down under there to remove now this whole piece should pop out and get three pins right there and then this bottom bolt down here that's holding that in and now your light should be or no there's eight millimeter two eight millimeters back there now that are holding that light in and that's all we got to do to get those out of there. Oops. There's our other bolt. All right, so now this whole thing should come out. We've got one connector right here. Pinch that tab. So 
slide off and there we go. All right, so here you can see the size difference between how big that is and how not big that is. So flip it over, look at the, the design difference. Yeah. Big red chunk of plastic. Yeah, significantly smaller chunk of plastic with a little bit of white in there and some black outline. And this black plastic does match with the fender, fender flares and the rest of the other plastics on here pretty well. So I think that will look good. Now, a couple of things to note. We do have to switch some things over. First of all, here on this side, you'll see that these have little, it almost feels like rubber hoses in there. This is for the driver's side. And that's why I made a note of how not hard those were turned in. I've seen people that have installed these so far and that's been their complaint, that these are too soft. And that if you crank everything, if you tighten everything all the way down, then it does the on the driver's side, it doesn't sit flush. But I think they're just tightening too hard down on these because these are really soft. But I think that's intentional. Like I said, they weren't very, they weren't cranked down to start with. So I think as long as they're snug in there and that there is some pressure on these, that they'll be fine. But we'll see. If it is a problem, I've seen people stacking washers or different felt things or different things on these to get it to sit flush with that back piece. Um, and apparently it's only an issue here on the driver's side. Everybody said the passenger side fit on there perfectly well. So uh, that's why I wanted to do this side. Now before I do anything in there, I'm gonna clean that up. And then there's a couple of steps we have to follow to get this ready to go before it's installed. So let me wash that, clean that up a bit, and then we'll get into getting this set up and installed. We have to install this onto the bracket, and there's very tiny screws and very tiny nuts for doing that right here. And these are just gonna go on the inside. They got one screw hole there, one screw hole there. For ease of access, let's just go through the top. Into the back. Get the first one started. And I'll try to get this other one. That's basically how it gets installed. Uh, there is some 3M tape on here, which seems to be preventing me from being able to squish this all the way in. Uh, but before I commit to taking that 3M tape and sticking this, I wanna go fit this over on the Bronco because I, the, the other complaint that I saw was that these brackets don't work if you have the bliss system, which I do have. So I want to take this over there. Um, now that it's, it's sturdy, it's not going to fall apart on me and see how this is going to fit in there. And if not, maybe we just go ahead and stick this with the 3M tape somewhere in that cavity. So let's go over there and see. Yeah, their instructions say like it's right, pretty much right where this bliss system is, the blind spot monitor. Uh, is where that is supposed to go. I think if we just tape it right there, it's gonna work. So let's take this clamp off and do that. So yeah, if you have the Bliss or Blind Spot Monitoring, I don't think these are gonna work. But like I said, it's got 3M tape on the back of it already. 
just wash that really good and I think we could stick that down. So then the only other thing we have to do is, well, we lost our little rubber piece there, but up here, if we look, we got this pin, we've got that pin, this pin, however, we don't. So we just need to pry this off. And transfer that over to this piece. Should just slide on there. And I think this piece is ready to go on there. Just need to plug that together. However it fits, like so. And this should just kind of tuck up under there. And then we had the two eight millimeters. And I'm switching to a hand tool because I don't want to over tighten these. Now there's definitely room where I could tighten that down. But I think that looks pretty flush. So I'm going to try that out. Oh, before we do, let me stick my resistor on here. Yeah, and could kind of tuck it up underneath the light, which is even better. Now, it's right there, it's out of the way. It won't be in the way of putting this piece back on. I think we're good. All right, so before you could put this piece back on, you do have to do a little trimming just right here on this plastic. They see you got a couple of plastic spots, but right here it rubs to the new uh, lighting fixture. Now she has some plastic nips, snips. I'm just kind of cut that out of there, then it should fit in there. Let's see if this will line up now. Yeah, and now when we put our bolt right there. All right, so now I can see where the complaints were, because like I said, I didn't, I didn't even tighten that all the way down, and it's still got a pretty big gap there where I could try to put some more rubber back behind that but yeah I mean even the way it is it's kind of bouncy around in there so I do see why people were uh, putting some washers and other things back behind there so yeah that is not out along here but then it starts going in and then this whole piece so I'm gonna pull this 10 millimeter back out pull this whole piece out and then see what we can do about getting this backed out a bit. There's actually two different sizes of these rubber tubes. I had a short one on top. There is a longer piece in there, so I'm gonna, before I start using other stuff, I'm gonna try to use their long one there and see what happens. I actually think we're gonna be okay with it, right like that. Could, once we tighten everything down. Now this piece should just snap into place up here. It's a little bit of a gap here up at the top. The bottom is perfectly fine. So even with that longer piece of rubber, I might be able to back out a couple of threads. But I see why people are complaining about that and wanting to put 
some spacers or other washers behind besides that like small rubber piece because that's uh that it wasn't super tight in there and that's still a pretty big gap so that's something we'll try probably address but for right now i see the difference see those lights hopefully you guys did but uh <laughs> I'm gonna take a look now I was complaining about the fit over there on the driver side and the passenger side OEMs not really that much better at the top so right now I think we match OEM quality uh, We'll see about what we could do to improve that. But for right now, we'll go ahead and take this off. Now, it's going to be very similar to the this side. Just got to take bottom three fasteners off, and then we should be able to access everything else from that. Pry this out. that out. This side should pop right out. That's going to be the same thing. Got 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and then two 8 millimeters in there. And just like the other side, we've got this pin. Goes on like that, and we're ready to install. As I said, these screws, these eight millimeter screws were actually tight in there. They are all the way tight, unlike the driver's side. And from what I understand, these just get snug all the way down, and there is no problem. Now there for the resistor, just put it right there in the middle of that hinge. Should be out of the way there. Looks like it will be. And voila. Passenger side definitely fits in there much, much better. Passenger or driver sides off a little bit. So I might come in and mess with that and bring this up If I do I'll do the same on the other side But I got stuff I got to do today. So that's gonna be good for now All right, so there we go. We got the Oracle flush mount lights installed. Uh, they look good. I like them. I personally, I like them. I like the style over the OEM. Uh, I don't know if I like them better than the signature light, but for somebody like me that didn't get the signature lighting, I think these look awesome. 
Plus, I love the fact that they are flush mount and not sticking out. So, no more uh, scratches and blemishes along this side of them. Of course, the one I pulled out doesn't have any. Yeah, I don't know how well you can pick up on the camera, but these things are all scratched. Completely scratched up from tree branches and everything else where those would avoid them. So appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you next time.